What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. I'm Pitching Ninja, and I'm here, of course, with Will Leahy. Boom. Let's start with the whip around the league. Tarek Skubal had five strikeouts in five innings, giving up two hits and no runs. He had these fastballs, including this 100-mile-an-hour heater. Well, it was only 99.6 miles an hour, but we round up here. He also had these change-ups, including this painted change-up. And he faced Pablo Lopez, who had seven strikeouts in four innings, giving up five earned runs, and had this sword on a changeup, as well as these curveballs, and had these filthy sweepers, including this one to Javi Baez, which I can't tell if this sweeper is actually filthy or if it's just Javi Baez being Javi Baez. What do you think, Will? I think Javi Baez striking out from every person on earth is the best ninja gag we got going. Tarek Skubal only hit 99.6 miles an hour this game, which still falls short of his goal of hitting 100 miles an hour legit that we discussed in our interview on the Baseball Dojo podcast. 99.8, I think, is the best, my best vault. But I'm, I've been trying to hit 100 for a while, and I can't do it. I, you know, my last outing, I was 99.6, and that was like, my outing before that was 99.6. I'm at that threshold right now where it's like, I don't know what I need to do, but maybe try a little less hard. I don't know. I think it's after this interview, you're going to hit a hundred and we're, we're going to talk about the fact that we discuss this and we're going to manifest that it. It's going to happen. I just need to hit once because you know, it'll round up on the TV and it, it's not real. You know, it, right. it, it's not what it, it's not real. Bailey Falter had three K's in five innings, giving up one run. He had these curveballs and slider. And he faced Christopher Sanchez, who had six Ks and six innings, giving up one earned run, and had these dirty change-ups. He got eight swings and misses on these change-ups. Why were they dirty, Will? Well, if you check out his last name, it'll, it'll give you a good understanding of what's going on here. I also love this sinker from Sanchez, where Tom McCarthy says, the Ripper will let you know. Free call. The Ripper will let you know. And here's Tom McCarthy trying to explain to John Cruck who Pitching Ninja is, as he explained who the Ripper is. Rob Friedman from the uh, Pitching Ninja. Got some great shirts out there. He's the one that came up with it. So what's the Pitching Ninja do? He breaks down pitches. And I think John Cruck has a better chance of hitting a Randy Johnson slider than understanding who Pitching Ninja is. Keaton Wynn had six Ks in five innings, giving up two runs. He had these fastballs and splitters. And he faced Jacob Wagesback. Who had four Ks in four innings, even though no earned runs. I'm sorry. I have a really tough time with this guy's name. I'm going to call him Rowan Gartner or Garden Hoser or kind of anything along those lines. And it's really not that hard. It's phonetics. Freddie Peralta probably had the best game of anybody yesterday. He had 11 strikeouts and in six innings, giving up one run on five hits and had no walks. He had these fastballs, including this one that was 98 miles an hour and painted with his fastball. He also had these curveballs and sliders. And he faced Tyler Wells, who had three Ks in four innings, giving up four runs, and had this fastball. Ryan Feltner had four Ks in five innings, giving up two runs. Got a sword on this slider. And he faced Kevin Gosman, who had four Ks in three and two-thirds innings, giving up six runs. His ERA on the season is now 11.57. He did have these wicked splitters. Reed Detmers had seven strikeouts in six and a third innings, giving up no runs. He had this elevated fastball for a sword these wicked sliders, and these hammer curveballs. And Detmers has a great curveball. Here's an overlay of his fastball and curveball, and you can see why those two pitches work so well together. And he faced Tanner Houck, who had two Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up four earned runs. Houck did have this filthy back foot slider and this splitter. Max Fried had four Ks in six and a third innings, giving up one run. He had this nasty changeup, this wicked slider, as well as this beautiful curveball. And he faced Trevor Rogers, who had five Ks in five innings, giving up two runs, and these fastballs and changeup. Luis Severino had four Ks in five innings, giving up only one hit and one run. He had this elevated fastball and these wicked sliders. Will, what did you think about Sevy? Uh, Since you I, saw I, him in person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was uh, it was a lovely game. Sevy uh, didn't look particularly filthy. He was getting hit kind of hard early on, even though he didn't really give up any hits. But uh yeah, I mean, he he looked pretty good, Ninja. I wasn't I wasn't blown out of my shoes. 
Well, he'll try harder next time to impress you. I have it on good. Waka, it was Waka had some some nasty changeups. Well, Will just did Michael Waka's section because <laughs> Michael Waka had four Ks in six innings. He gave up five runs, but did have some nasty changeups, as Will said. Our roving correspondent, Andrew Abbott, had three Ks in seven innings, giving up only one run, and had this sweeper. He faced Chris the Snake Flexen, who had two Ks in two and two thirds innings, giving up six runs, and had this cutter. Not the normal snake that we're used to, although he's not called the snake because of his pitching prowess. Dane Dunning had three Ks in five innings, giving up three runs, and had these two seamers. He faced J.P. France, who had three Ks in four innings, giving up eight runs. France had this painted curveball and picked up an Angel Hernandez special. Ninja, what is an Angel Hernandez special? Well, it's when Angel Hernandez is behind home plate. And it gives you three consecutive pitches off the plate for strikes, including the last one that I believe is the furthest the umpire auditor has ever tracked a pitch off the plate. This one was almost seven inches off the plate. Holy f***ing shit, is this man blind. Bryce Miller had four Ks in six and a third innings, giving up no earned runs. His ERA on the season is now 1.96, smoking. He had this 95 mile an hour heater while messing with timing. And I don't remember Miller doing this before. I love it. He faced Jordan Wicks, who had six Ks in four innings, giving up four runs, and had these nasty changeups. I thought his changeups looked really good, even though he did give up a bunch of runs. Steven Matz had two Ks in four and two thirds innings, giving up one earned run, and had this changeup. Brandon fought struggled, but fought through those struggles. Did, did he, Ninja? <laughs> he did. He literally did. He gave up six runs over the first three innings, but finished with six runs in six innings and had four strikeouts. He had these sweepers and sinkers. Paul Blackburn had four Ks in six and a third innings, gave up no runs. Will, do you know what his ERA is this year? I have a feeling you'll tell me, Ninja. It is 0.00. <laughs> that is not sustainable for Paul Blackburn, but he's an underrated pitcher because he doesn't throw flames. He just knows how to pitch. He had these curveballs and picked up a sword. He faced Jake Irvin, who had five Ks in six innings, gave up one run, and had this 96-mile-an-hour heater. Yoshinobu Yamamoto had six strikeouts in five innings. He gave up three runs, but we're going to ignore those runs because I kind of jinxed him. He had this painted fastball. I mean, look at that. That is a dart, as well as this painted splitter. And here's an overlay of his fastball and splitter, and you can see why those two pitches work so well together and how long they tunnel. But the pitch of the game for Yamamoto was his curveball. Look at this curveball to Tatis. I think he misses this by like two feet. And then he had this knee buckling curveball. Now I said I jinxed him because after that curveball to Tatis, I said Yamamoto's curveball is unfair. And then as I typed that, Machado hit a home run off his curveball. Machado. Such is the life of pitching. It is go. not a ninja jinx. I don't <laughs> believe in jinxes. That's right. Just keep saying it out loud. And it, it'll make it true. He faced Michael King, who had four Ks in five innings, giving up four earned runs. He had these sweepers, including this one that got the LOL sword, as well as these disgusting changeups. Other starters that are not in the major leagues, we had Paul Skeens getting eight strikeouts in three and a third innings. He actually had eight strikeouts in his first three innings and had a strike him out, throw him out, double play as one of those outs. So he legit got eight outs with eight Ks. That's not bad. He also is the challenge king here. I mean, he is ready to replace Angel Hernandez right now. Look at these challenges. Perfect form, taps his hat, and gets them both right. He now has 19 strikeouts in nine and a third innings in AAA, giving up only four hits. He had 15 pitches yesterday at 100 miles an hour or more and average 100.3 miles an hour on his fastball. Bring this man up! What's he still doing down there, Ninja? I think he's just destroying hitters. Like he, They just have him down there to demoralize people. And he's going to do this when he comes up, too. This man is a hard worker and has an amazing arm and has pinpoint command, too. It's just ridiculous. Also in college, Chase Burns pitched yesterday, had this 99-mile-an-hour heater, and this disgusting at-bat. I think these were three consecutive pitches. This is totally unfair for college kids to have to hit against this. Like you study for calculus and then you have to face this stuff. Screw that. Now onto my filthiest relievers. Lucas Ersig had this slider at 99 mile an hour heater. 
Araldus Chapman had this White Castle special. Hunter Harvey had this splitter and fastball. Ryan Helsley had these wicked sliders. Jorge Lopez had this knuckle curve. Joe Kelly had this six slider and this beautiful backdoor two-seamer. Junior Marte nearly broke Riomuto's wrist with this pitch. It's a cross-up, and he gets hit with, I think, this 98 miles an hour straight to the wrist. I would be in the hospital. JT stayed in the game. Yuki Matsui had this nasty splitter and slider. Luis Ortiz had this slider, and the Ripper gets his man here. An absolute beautiful kill. Ah! Adam Adovino had this two-seamer and slider, and watch these two things crisscross. It's kind of sick. And Ryan Walker had this nasty slider out of his crossfire delivery. And look at this, how much he steps across as he's throwing this pitch. My top five pitches for the day. At number five, I have Joe Kelly's slider. At number four, Freddie Peralta's filthy stuff. At number three, Tarek Skubal hitting 100. Well, almost hitting a legit 100. At number two, I have Chase Burns. And that disgusting overmatched three pitch K. And at number one, I have Yoshinobu Yamamoto's hammer curveballs. That yo yo curveball is pure filth. And now, my pitching ninja moment of Zen. Trey Turner is known for his gracefulness of his slides. I mean, look at these things, absolutely beautiful. Well, fielding this ground ball, a little less graceful. Over toward the hole. Oh, oh man, man, Trey just slips. slips. My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm gonna start with Chris Sale for seven Ks or more, then take Mackenzie Gore for seven Ks or more, and top it off with Shota Imanaga for six Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?